South. And so, Russ Wright sets off on perhaps the most hazardous uh, mission of his life to pay in a cheque for £16,000 without tripping over the steps of the bank or bumping his head on the cashier's window. Now, uh, we've got nine contestants left. His fastest finger first again. Four answers, one correct order. Nice and quiet in the audience, please. Here comes the next question. Put these former soap stars in the order they first entered the UK Top 10 Singles Chart. Michelle Gale, Jason Donovan, Natalie Imbruglia, Nick Berry. OK, let's see who knows their soaps and who knows their pops. This is the right order, then. Uh, farthest back in time was actually Nick Berry, uh, back in 86, with uh, Every Loser Wins. Then it was Jason Donovan in 1988 with Nothing Can Divide Us. Uh, then Michelle Gale, 1994, with Sweetness. And most recent, Natalie Imbruglia, uh, 1997, with Torn. That's the right order. Now, nine left. How many got it right? These were correct. Uh, only one again. Carl Schuka in 8.62 seconds. Carl. Final question. So our third contestant tonight, Carl Schuker, a freelance zoological consultant from West Bromwich in the West Midlands. Up in the audience is Mum Mary. Carl's got loads and loads of books at home, which he uses mainly in his work as a writer. He says if he does really well tonight, he wants to buy a bigger house with a library. Carl has had nine books published, including one which investigated mythical creatures. Uh, he thinks there might well be a yeti, though he's not at all sure about the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, if he does cite a big cheque tonight, Carl would also like to buy himself a Harley Davidson motorbike, as he's had a keen interest in high performance machines ever since he was a little boy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing or what, Carl? <laughs> That's Carl aged about uh, two and a half. He hardly changed at all. <laughs> uh, he also wants to visit the seven wildlife wonders of the world. Why do you think there's a Yeti of an abominable snowman? Um. There have been a lot of good reports over the years, but this year um, some hair samples were brought back from um, the Himalayas, which were sent to Oxford, the, the world's greatest uh, hair analysis uh, department, and they couldn't identify them. And it's the first time, I believe, they've ever had any hair that so they couldn't identify with a known species. So that's good evidence that there might be something unknown in the Himalayas. What about the Loch Ness Monster, then? Um, that's, the, that's the kind of bet noir in every sense of the word. But, I mean, it could be just a wave formation, an unusual wave formation, or an atmospheric refraction phenomenon, but I think there is a mystery needing uh, a solution. OK, well, lots of luck. 15 questions, three new lifelines, one million pounds. Sounds very simple when you say it like that. OK, lots of luck, Carl. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? OK, question number one for 100 pounds. This is it. In which room are school children most likely to have their lessons? Bathroom. Changing room. Classroom. Living room. Um, that'd be classroom, Chris. One hundred pounds, well played. <laughs> okay, got a hundred pounds. Have a look at question number two for two hundred quid. Here it is. Which of these is the title of a hit Broadway musical comedy? Bruce's and Sheila's, blokes and birds, guys and dolls, fellas and lasses. Mm, last one sounds if it's come from Scotland, but I think I'll go with guys and dogs. That's right, Arts, you've got two on the pants. <laughs> a groom is a person employed to look after which animals? Horses, ducks, snakes, fish. Horses, please. You know that one, wouldn't you? It's uh, the right answer, you've got three on the <laughs> Right, Carl, you got 300 quid. Uh, question number four is for 500 pounds. Here it comes. Which of these words describes someone with a very pale face? Ashen, oaken, beechen, pinen. Um, that would be ashen. It's the right answer. You got 500 pounds. <laughs> right, last point you could go home with nothing, but this will guarantee you 1,000 pounds. Here it is, question number five. Which document would be endorsed with a visa? Tax return, 
television license, passport, birth certificate. Uh, well, I've had mine endorsed with a visa a couple of times, so it would be a passport. It's the right answer. You got one thousand pounds. We'll take it. Carl, good news. That's about yep, guaranteed. Great, That's great. good. Right, question number six then. Serious business, ten between you and a million. All three lifelines intact. This is number six of a possible 15. Which comedian did Pamela Stevenson marry in 1989? Mel Smith, Rowan Atkinson, Rory Bremner, Billy Connolly. I think she'd written a book about him lately. Um, it's Billy Connolly. Final answer? Yep, final answer. It's the right answer. She has just written the book. You've got £2,000. OK, number seven for 4000 Still no need for any lifeline. Have a look at this. The word noggin is an informal term for which part of the human body? Foot. Knee. Stomach. Head. 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 Head, yes. Final answer? Yep, final answer. As in, use your noggin, yes. use your head, it's the right answer. You've got 4,000. <laughs> Do you believe you're here? Not really, no. I think I'm going to wake up in a moment. I'm just making the most of it, really. <laughs> the alarm bit. clock's going to go off any moment. <laughs> Always done. A lot of people feel that. A lot of people <laughs> sit there thinking, I'm in a trance, this is not real. I've dreamt this a lot of times. Whatever. Yeah. This is real, trust me. Right. I'll pinch you if you like. Okay. Um, you've got £4,000. Right. This would be for £8,000. You've got all three lifelines. You haven't touched them yet. Have a look. It's question number eight. Which of these was president of the Soviet Union in the 1980s? Lenin, Khrushchev, Andropov, Putin. Andropov. Not Khrushchev. No, 60s, I think. Final answer? Yep, final answer. You just won £8,000. <laughs> Question number nine is for 16000 You would lose £7,000 here if you gave me a wrong answer. But you still have 50-50, phone a friend and ask this audience. Have a look at number nine for 16000 what type of creature is a silkworm? Now, you might know this. What type of creature is a silkworm? How embarrassing to get it wrong, though. Yeah, yeah. A, a maggot. B, a centipede. C, a spider. D, a caterpillar. Just checking this. Caterpillar, Chris. You sure? You're a zoological <laughs> I know, consultant. This, this is it, this one. I'm just checking. Yeah, it's a caterpillar. Final answer. Yeah. It's the right answer. You've got 16,000 pounds. And you have not yet used any lifeline. <laughs> it's a caterpillar of a silk moth, I think. Well, yeah. you should know. I don't know why I'm telling you. You <laughs> should know you do this for a living. Right, you got £16,000. Have a look at number 10 for 32000 Just be aware, this is a big old drop here. If you did go for this and give me a wrong answer, you lose 15000 But you have three lifelines. You could use all three and still walk away taking £16,000. Have a look at number 10. It's worth 32000 which town in New Mexico was allegedly the site of a UFO crash landing in 1947? Roswell, Boswell, Coswell, Doswell. Roswell. Because the, the incident was called the Roswell incident. Final answer. Final answer. You've just won £32,000. You have not used any lifeline. Ooh. It's not a dream. No. Believe. Believe. Well, I'll touch it first, and I'll tell you. The touch it. Truth. Take it. That's not a dream. That's a real check. I'll take it. Take it. It's yours. You want it? Can I take it, please? <laughs> Put it in your pocket. Okay. Do Thank what you, you want. Whatever happens, Carl, you go home with that check for thirty-two thousand pounds. Right, now listen, you're five away from a million, you've got all three lifelines, you've not yet touched a single lifeline, you've got a 50-50, you can phone a friend and you can ask this audience. Question number 11, you might as well play this one, question number 11 is for £64,000. Have a look, here it is. Which of these is a book which specifically examines the lives of saints? 
Hagiography, topography, polygraphy, stenography. Hagiography. Have you got one? No. In your vast collection of books? <laughs> no, probably not. Why are you sure it's hagiography? Well, topography is to do with landscape. Polygraphy is to do with lie detecting and stenography is something to do with writing or stenciling, something like that. So it's final be, answer. It's got to be hagiography. Hagi yep, final answer. Yep, it's the right answer. You've got £64,000. <laughs> Come on, give us that back. Come on. Come on, Mr. Shooter. Let's have a check back, bit please. Bit bastard, never mind. You've got that no matter what. No matter what, you go home tonight. I'm mess with this. Really I know, I know. I won't put the next one in my pocket. I just hold it. Do whatever you want. <laughs> um, there might be some more. Right, you've got £32,000 guaranteed, but at this moment you can have that check for 64000 Take it. Question. Question number 12 is for £125,000. If you give me a wrong answer, you drop 32000 Have a look at it. It's question number 12 of a possible 15. You have all three lifelines untouched. Which of these singers appeared on a British postage stamp in June 1999? Elton John. Freddie Mercury. Cliff Richard. John Lennon. Can I go pick, 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 pick? You can. First lifeline you've needed at uh, one hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. Computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Carl the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Oh, I was hoping one of those would go. Those are the two I was torn between. <sighs> First lifeline you've needed. You've got sixty-four thousand pounds, Carl. You can walk away, but you might as well use both lifelines. You can still walk away having done that. Which of these singers appeared on a British postage stamp in June 1999? Freddie Mercury or John Lennon? One of those is worth £125,000. It's up to you. No, I'll go Freddie Mercury. Final answer. Why did you not go for Lennon? Because I have seen a stamp with Freddie Mercury on, and it's about that period, but I, ha I can't recollect John Lennon at all ever being on a postage stamp. I know that you have to be dead, basically, to be on a postage stamp in Great Britain, you, other than the royal family. Um, and the other two were alive, so... Carl, I stop wittering. You just won. £125,000! <laughs> this is question number 13 of a possible 15. Which of these Channel Islands is the farthest south? Guernsey. Sark. Jersey. Alderney. to most of these, I'm trying to picture in my mind the, the orientation of them in relation to each time. other. It's worth a quarter of a million. Jersey. No lifelines. You don't want to use one. 
There's nothing on my screen here at all to give me a final answer. I know it's not Alderney. I'm not worried about Alderney. And I'm pretty sure it's not Guernsey. I'm sure Guernsey is north of Jersey, but Sark. Thank you.